With the growth of the internet in the 21st century, media has been constantly evolving. Out with the old and in with the new, not only have newspapers gone out of fashion, but the way we consume media and news has also changed. Vox Media are one of a number of companies that have benefited from the changing trends, and they've evolved from a tiny site launched in the noughties to cover the Oakland A's to one of America's most well-known online brands. This is the story of Vox Media in their journey to success. Here's how it happened. In order to understand Vox and how they've succeeded, it's important to understand that they don't sit in the traditional journalism niche, but within explanatory journalism. But what does that mean? Well, according to Wikipedia, it's a form of reporting that attempts to present news stories in a more accessible manner by providing greater context than would be presented in traditional news sources. Essentially, by using photos, charts, videos, or animations, it puts complicated stories into layman's terms making it easier to understand for people who don't know about the topic or who aren't interested in paying it too much attention and it's aimed at millennials. Not massively dissimilar to how it happened. But let's get back to Vox Media. Some suggest that Vox's mission is to explain the news rather than simply report it, and Vox Media itself is the media company that owns eight different websites like SB Nation, The Verge, and Vox, focusing on various topics from sports, technology and politics, among other things. Their media empire now attracts more than 160 million people each year, but when the company first started in 2003, originally as Athletics Nation, launched by Tyler Blazinski, they focused exclusively on Oakland Athletics coverage, the baseball team that starred in Moneyball for those of you who don't follow baseball. What was just an Oakland A's blog originally, then spun out to become Sports Blogs Inc the parent company of the SB Nation website, with the sports-oriented Blazinski teaming up with Jerome Armstrong, a left-wing activist who founded the political blog MyDD, and Marcos Mulitsas, who founded Daily Kos, another political blog. SB Nation then grew by acquiring blogs about specific teams across a variety of sports, gathering in excess of 300 individual fan-run blogs, all under the SB banner, and by 2008, the trio had hired Jim Bankoff, a former AOL executive, to run the company, taking over from Blazinski as the business went on to raise in excess of $80 million. Three years later, in 2011, sports blogs then launched The Verge, a new site specifically focusing on technology, and officially rebranded the business to Vox Media. By 2012, they'd launched Polygon, a video game news website, and another year later they acquired the Curbed family of blogs, which looked at real estate, restaurants, and shopping. In 2014, the business brought in Ezra Klein, formerly of the Washington Post, who launched the news explanatory site we all know well, Vox.com, alongside Matt Iglesias, a former blogger at Think Progress, and Washington Post director Melissa Bell. And over the last five to six years, the portfolio of companies has continued to grow, to include the likes of Epic Media, Recode, and Vox Creative to the list. Where Vox has succeeded is by changing the way we consume media, not just through the devices we use, but also the way we read. Online publications in the early days were just a copy-paste job from a newspaper, very text-heavy, and unlikely to keep the attention of a millennial. What's more is that stories were often split into different parts, and if you miss the original context, you wouldn't really know what's going on. Vox readers now have the capability to use what they describe as the card stack, swiping through different parts of a story told through different mediums, like video or charts, depending on personal preference. Their newsletter also breaks down stories to just the best and most relevant sentences, giving you a detailed snapshot in no time at all. For example, in the King vs. Burwell Obamacare news story, Vox published a 12,000 word essay as well as a three sentence breakdown. They saw almost exactly as many clicks as each other, showing how people consume media in different ways. But part of Vox's success in recent years breaks down to the software and content management system, known as CMS, that it has built to enable this variety of media formats. Chorus is the little-known software that Vox Media uses to produce and distribute its stories, and this proprietary technology can be used to monetize articles, monitor analytics, and share content across social media. It's essentially their secret source that differentiates Vox Media from other blogging sites. Similar to Amazon with their AWS technology, Vox is now selling their service to competitors, opening up their business to software as a service and B2B sales. But like all successful organizations, Vox Media often comes under scrutiny from its competitors and members of the public, and controversy often stems from its political viewpoints. It's been criticized for its progressive views, that being it believes in a political philosophy called progressivism, which supports social reform. 
Its liberal bias has been criticised on numerous occasions, with some readers suggesting that previous presidential coverage was like an advert for Obama, driven by the site's link to the former president through Ezra Klein. Their gaming website Polygon has also been criticised for displaying an excessive amount of identity politics within their articles, such as sexuality and race in video games. Christopher Grant, the editor, responded by saying the site unapologetically covers video games from a left-wing perspective. But as the company looks forward, there's an emphasis on video production through their business Vox Entertainment, which was formed in March 2015 and is now part of Vox Media Studios. They're known for a variety of shows that you may not have realised were connected to Vox, like American Style on CNN, Explained on Netflix, Glad You Asked on YouTube, and No Passport Required on PBS. But it doesn't stop there, as Vox has also tapped into the ever-popular podcast market with shows like Recode's Recode Decode, The Verge Cast, Today Explained, and The Ezra Klein Show, as they bid to conquer all forms of millennial media consumption. In 2019, Vox then merged with New York Media to launch a new independent media company, as the growth story continues. Vox's style works well in an age where everyone's heads are buried in their phones and attention spans are lower than ever, emphasising the importance of a quick and quality read, and the portfolio of websites has come a long way in 17 years from that small Oakland blog. But as the business expands into visual and audio media, as well as offering up their proprietary technology in chorus, they're only just getting started. Thanks for watching.